स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया okay so good morning everyone so in today's lecture i am going to uh, discuss the final topic related to the second variation namely what is the interpretation or what is the geometric meaning of the conjugate points on which we have spent so much time in the last two lectures and then towards the later half of this course i am also going to talk about an application of the calculus of variations namely the one arising in optimal control theory so let us start our discussion today so i am going to cover two topics the first one will be mainly the continuation of our previous lectures discussion that is on the geometric uh, meaning of conjugate points okay and the second topic that i will be starting today a new topic will be applications of calculus of variations in optimal control theory okay so let's uh, let's continue our discussion on the geometric meaning so what are these conjugate points we saw that the moment we have non zero or uh, non trivial conjugate points we are guaranteed that the extrema that we find will neither be a minima or a maxima right so so the question is what are these conjugate points so so i am going to right away give the result and i will show this result using uh, some analysis so it turns out that the locus of these conjugate points represent an envelope of the family of extremals okay so so the result that i will like to show is that the locus of of these of the conjugate points the locus of the conjugate points represent represent an envelope an envelope for or envelope of the family of extremals okay of the functional under consideration okay so so let let us you know choose a family of extremals a two parameter family of extremals which is the solution to the euler lagrange equation so let us consider y which is a function of x and the parameter c1 c2 which is the solution to the euler lagrange equation or essentially i am saying this is an extremal to our functional and suppose suppose we look at a neighboring extremal that is we slightly vary these these fam family of constants so we will still retain we will still find another extremal by varying these constants Uh, which will be slightly different from the original one so let us consider let us consider suppose y of x comma c1 plus delta c1 uh, comma c2 plus delta c2 be the be the family which represents a neighboring extremal represents a neighboring neighboring extremals okay so then uh, so so this uh, this change in the family of extremal is quite smooth because uh, because my y the extremal itself is a smooth uh, function with respect to uh, these constants c1 and c2 okay so so since since y is smooth smooth with respect to 
C case. So, what I mean to say is we change these, these family of constants, we are going to continue to get a family of extremals and this change uh, uh, from uh, this change due to this, uh, this change of the family of extremals due to these changes in the constants will be uh, continuously differentiable or smooth. Okay, so, then, so, then using Taylor series, using Taylor series, we can uh, derive certain conclusions. So, I am going to expand this perturbed value of the extremal in terms of the original extremal. So, I see that y of x plus c 1 comma c 1 plus delta c 1 comma c 2 plus delta c 2 will be uh, using Taylor series will be y of x comma c 1 plus c 2 well c 1 comma c 2 the original extremal plus the first order term delta c 1 times uh, del y del c 1 plus delta c 2 times del y del c 2 right and then uh, plus order uh, delta c square terms higher order terms. Uh, notice that from our previous dis, uh, from our discussion in the previous lecture we know that uh, this variation of y with respect to the first constant is our first is our solution to the Jacobi accessory equation and similarly with respect to C 2 is the second solution. So, these u 1 and u 2 are the solution to the Jacobi accessory equation is what we have seen in our previous lecture. And then we also see that uh, suppose now uh, I want to see what is the effect of these conjugate points on these family of extremals. So, suppose I introduce a conjugate point suppose there exists kappa uh, not equal to x naught uh, which is a point conjugate to x naught kappa which is a point conjugate to x naught and I see that there will be a which means that there is a non trivial there is a non trivial there is a non trivial solution given by u to be alpha u 1 plus beta u 2 which vanishes at these conjugate points such that u of x naught is equal to u of kappa is equal to 0. Okay. So, we can use this information we can use this information uh, in this Taylor series expansion we see that we see that u of x naught. Uh, so, if my if my phi is delta c 1 and my beta is delta c 2 we see that uh, this is nothing but u of x let us evaluate uh, this Taylor series expansion at the conjugate points x naught and kappa right. So, so what we have is the following uh, so since well let us see what have we written here so yeah such that this is the case so which means there exists the previous statement is equivalent to saying that there exists these uh, these uh, these constants delta c 1 delta c 2 such that uh, not both of them are 0 and uh, and we have that the first order term here this this underlined term they vanish at the conjugate points x naught and x 1. Okay. So, delta c 1 times uh, u 1 at x naught plus delta c 2 times u 2 at x naught is equal to 0 and delta c 1 times u 1 at kappa plus delta c 2 u 2 at kappa is 0 that comes from right away from the points from the definition of points x 0 and kappa being conjugate to each other. Okay. So, so, which means which means the following. So, if we were to find the distance between so, which means that if we were to find this distance y of x comma c 1 
plus delta C 1 comma C 2 plus delta C 2 minus y of x comma C 1 comma C 2. Notice this distance if we were to find this distance we see that this is of the order of the sec delta C square or uh, the first order terms vanishes right. So, what we have is the following. So, this becomes uh, this is of uh, this is of the order uh, this is of the order delta c square right uh, at at the points uh, kappa and x naught which are my conjugate points so the conclusion is the following the conclusion is at the conjugate points the distance between the neighboring extremals they uh, they approach to 0 as uh, as delta c goes to 0 or at the conjugate points the neighboring extremals nearly intersect ok. So, so the conclusion is that at conjugate points at conjugate points it the distance between at conjugate points the distance between the neighboring extremals uh, is order of delta c square and as delta c goes to 0 right. And further the final con conclusion out of all this exercise is that, that at the conjugate points the neighboring the neighboring extremals they nearly intersect they nearly intersect at the conjugate points ok. So, or in other words uh, the family of conjugate points they represent an envelope of the family of extremals ok or, uh, or the conjugate points ok. The conjugate points represent represent uh, an envelope envelope of the family uh, of extremals ok. So, at least uh, we know what do we mean by uh, the locus of these. So, what are the locus of these conjugate points they are the envelope of the family of extremals ok. So, so that completes the geometric description or the geometric meaning of these conjugate points. This question is how can we find this envelope or is there is there a analytical way or, or a quantitative way to find this envelope. So, that is what we are going to discuss next. So, this question is how to find how to find these envelope. Okay. So, suppose we are given a one parameter family of extremals. Okay. So, let me start with let h be h of x comma y comma c be uh, let us say that well h being this let us say this is my this is my one parameter parameter uh, family let me call this family f uh, of uh, of curves let let me start with the most general definition of the envelope and then we will look at the specific case where this envelope represents the envelope for the family of extremals so let me start with the one parameter family of curves so this is the one parameter family of curves let me also simplify that we are talking in 2d so in the xy plane let, characterized by the parameter c right characterized by 
C. So, then for this family what uh, what is an envelope? So, we define the envelope as the curve let us say a curve nu such that every point on this enveloping curve nu there is a point on this family of curve h which is tangent to nu or in other words every arc of this enveloping function nu contains infinitesimal or infinitely many points from this family at which these are tangents. Okay. So, what I said is the following. So, a curve a curve nu is an envelope envelope of the family f if the following sets of two condition holds at each point at each point let us say x hat y hat on the curve nu there is there is a curve let us say gamma in this family which is tangent tangent to nu at each point x hat y hat in nu there is a curve gamma tangent to nu and and there exists infinitely many curves infinitely many curves in this in this family f which are tangent tangent to each arc of nu okay so we are going to use this definition of the envelope to derive the condition for the envelope of the extremals okay so let us start our analysis let us say uh, we consider a point on this family of envelope let's say i have a point x hat y hat so at x hat y hat so at at each point x hat y hat which belongs to this curve nu let's say there exists a, a constant the constant corresponds to this constant c of the family of extremals there exists a constant which is c of x hat comma y hat for this point that we have taken and y hat itself is a function of x hat so this is implicitly a function of only x hat so there exists a constant c of x hat notice now that this constant c is the constant with respect to the family of extremals h it is not a constant with respect to the points lying on the, the curve nu right so this this uh, confusion should not be there why is a constant a function of x hat the constant c is a constant with respect to the family f of the extremals and not a constant with respect to the family nu or, or the locus of point nu for the envelope right so it's a function for each point on the envelope okay so such that such that i have so this point which lies on my envelope also satisfies the family of extremals such that i have this thing holds right so this thing holds let me call this relation as my one so which means that if i were to differentiate uh, differentiate this relation one so with respect to a point on the envelope so d d x hat of h of x hat comma y hat comma c hat well let me call this as uh, let us be specific this is c of x hat and this is also c of x hat okay so i am differentiating with respect to x hat we use the standard chain rule or the chain rule argument so this is partial h partial x hat plus partial h partial y hat times y prime at x hat plus partial h partial c times c prime at x hat so that's the standard uh, chain rule argument okay so let me call this as my relation a now notice that if we were to look at the same 
uh, this uh, we were to apply the same chain rule for any point lying on the family of the extremals not necessarily lying on the envelope uh, we would have ended up with the following relation so for any for for any curve curve uh, in the family in the family f let's f of extremals for any family for any curve in the family f of extremals uh, so so i get that let me call this set of points as x comma y so the the points x comma y now lie on uh, the family of extremals and for this case my c is now a constant right so i see that the following relation holds the derivative of h with respect to x is uh, is partial h partial x plus partial h partial y times y prime note that there won't be any third term partial h partial c because now c is a is truly a constant for this family of extremals okay so from we call this as b now at the point of tangency we must have that the point xy which lies on the family of extremals must also lie on on our envelope nu right so they must uh, they must simultaneously satisfy condition a and b right so what we have is the following so at at the point of tangency tangency i must have that x y c uh, must be identically equal to the point x hat y hat c of x hat right tangency of uh, f and and the curve nu right of the of the family f and the curve nu i must have that uh, this three tuple will be identically equal to this three tuple and what we see is that del h del x hat plus del h del y hat uh, times y hat prime of x uh, we, we get that this is equal to uh, is equal to 0 right so we get that from we get that from our condition b so, so this is from b right now we can compare that so since this is this expression on the left hand side is identical to our condition a condition a notice that condition a had one extra term which means that that extra term will be set equal to 0 comparing the condition so which means the following uh, which means that from a and b I see that partial h partial c times uh, c prime at x hat this is also equal to 0. Okay. Now, as I just said few minutes back that the derivative of this constant uh, with respect to the variable x hat will not be 0 in general because c is not a constant uh, with respect to the family nu of the envelope it is a constant for the family of extremals h. Right? So, in general in general i have that c prime of x hat uh, is not zero and that gives me the conclusion that del h del c must be zero or this is what we were after the condition for finding the enveloping curves right so let me call this as 2 and we also had one more condition which we termed as 1 which means that any point which lies on the envelope must also be lying on the family of the extremals and of course it must satisfy the enveloping condition which is given by 2 okay so so the conclusion is the conclusion is that condition 1 and condition 2 gives me uh, the condition gives me the condition for uh, for extre for finding the envelope the condition for the envelope okay condition 1 and condition 2 gives me the condition for finding the envelope okay okay so so what have we got we see that 
let us look at some examples on how to find this envelope. So, let me call H. So, let my H of x y c be the following function y minus x plus c cube is equal to 0. And I want to find the family of envelopes for this family of curves. Right. So, my enveloping condition is so to, to find the family of envelope my envelope condition is del h del c is equal to 0 and from here I get that uh, negative 3 x plus c is 0 or, or the, the constant c is equal to minus x. Now, from here when we plug this plug this into my condition h is, h is equal to 0, I get my envelope to be the x axis. Okay. So, we plug, plug it in the condition for the family of extremals, we get that my envelope are all the points lying on the x axis. Okay. So, let us look at another quick example. So, this is my envelope for this uh, for this example. So, let us look at the second example. Uh, so, let me let us say that h of x y c is y square plus x plus c whole square minus 1 and I want to find the envelope for this class of functions. So, what I see is let me differentiate h with respect to c and I see that this is going to give me 2 times x plus c set equal to 0. From here I see that c the constant c is minus x. Okay. Now, which means that so that is my envelope condition and then using, using the family of extremals plus the envelope condition I see that. So, this factor vanishes or I see that y square is equal to 1 or y is equal to plus minus 1 and my envelopes I get two straight lines at y equal to 1 and y equal to minus 1. Right? So, so these are this boxed uh, equation are my family of envelope for the curves represented by h. Okay, let us quickly uh, wrap up our discussion in this uh, in this uh, topic by giving one more quick example. This example is related to the parable of safety. So, what exactly is this? So, people students who have done science majors in high school they must have been taught about the motion of a projectile under the action of gravity. And when we throw a projectile at a particular angle, it is going to follow a path which represents a parabola. The, the following uh, exercise will, will tell us what should be a typical height of an aeroplane or an object to fly so that it avoids a projectile path which is shot at a given velocity and a given angle, also known as the parabola of safety. Okay, so, we have to find so, we have to find the envelope, the envelope of projectiles, the projectiles under the action of gravity, under the action of gravity. Okay. So, so the trajectory is as follows. So, I am going to without solving the motion of projectile, I am going to recall the solution straight away. This is right from high school uh, Newtonian mechanics. Note, note that the trajectory by the projectile follows the following path. The trajectory y at uh, x comma the angle of uh, the, ang the initial angle phi is given by x tan phi minus g x square by by 2 v naught square cos square phi, where my v naught is my initial velocity and so this is my initial speed 
and g is my gravitational constant gravity constant okay okay so which means that the height at any given point the height of a projectile which follows this path will be given by uh, will be given by y minus this quantity right so so the height of the projectile the height of the projectile is given by h of x y phi is given by y well is given by y minus x tan phi plus g x square by 2 v naught square cos square phi. Okay. So, that is the height and now notice that it is a function of y x and phi. So, all I have to do is what is the envelope of this height uh, this family of curves represented by the parameter phi. So, to find uh, to find the envelope the envelope of this height function x y phi we need to differentiate h with respect to phi and we see that uh, we get the following expression this becomes uh, this becomes del h del phi is x secant phi times times g x by v naught square tan phi minus 1 this is set equal to 0 and we will I we, we cannot see we, we can quickly see that the the function which is sitting outside the bracket will never be 0 because that means that cos of phi is infinity that is not possible right. So, which means that from this criteria I am getting that g x by v naught square tan phi will be equal to 1 right. So, then this condition let us say star also satisfies also satisfies the equation of the parabola or the equation of the trajectory we plug this condition star right away. So, we substitute let me call this star or let me call this as double star or better we call this as relation 2 and we call this as relation 1. So, from 1 and 2 from from 1 and 2 I see that my y comes out to be the following v naught square by 2 g minus g x square by 2 v naught square. So, my parabola of safety or the parabola over which any object can fly without getting hit has the following curve. Okay. So, so, that completes the discussion of uh, on the importance of these conjugate points.